Hello everyone, it's Seaput Modgur again here. In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to create a poster or flyer like this one in Paint.net using these two images. If you are new to Paint.net and don't have it on your PC yet, you can download it from www.getpaint.net for free. If you want to follow along with this exercise, you can download the images I use in this tutorial by clicking the link on this video's description. You will also need to install the Boltbait plugins pack for Paint.net first, which you can get from the Paint.net online forum. Alright, let's get started. First, let's create a new image file of 1500 by 2100 pixels by clicking File on the menu bar and then click New. On the New File dialog, make sure the Maintain Aspect Ratio checkbox is cleared, and then under Pixel Size, change the width and the height to 1500 and 2100 pixels respectively. As for the resolution, leave it with its default value, and then click OK. As you can see here, Paint.net creates a new image file of a single layer named Background, as shown on the Layers panel on the right side. Since the theme color of the poster is dark, let's change the color of this background layer to black. To do that, first go to the Colors panel and then select Primary. If you don't see the Colors panel on your window, Go to the top right corner of the window and click the Colors Panel button to open the Colors Panel. And then click the black color from the color palette to set the primary color to black. If you don't have black on your color palette, click More and then set the RGB values all to zero. Once you set the primary color to black, go to the Toolbox panel and click the Paint Bucket. On the Paint Bucket Tool Options bar at the top, make sure that Solid Color is selected on the Fill column. After that, click anywhere on the image to change the background layer's color to black. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is add this fire image to create the poster's main image that looks like this. To do that, on the menu bar, click File and then click Open to open the fire image. Once the fire image is opened, go to the Toolbox panel and click the Move Selected Pixels tool. Then click anywhere on the image to select the entire area of the image. Now go to the toolbar and click Copy. After that, go back to the poster image by clicking the opened image preview at the top of the window. On the poster image window, go to the Layers panel and click the Add New Layer button to create a new layer for the fire image. The new layer will automatically become the current or working layer, meaning that anything we do on the canvas will only affect this layer. Then double-click the New Layers Preview on the Layers panel to open its Properties window. We're gonna name this layer Fire, and leave its opacity and blending mode to its default values. Then click OK. Now to add the fire image we have copied just now, simply click the Paste button on the toolbar. On the Paste dialog window, click Keep Canvas Size, and the fire image will be placed on the fire layer. Now as you can see here, the size of the fire image is much larger than the canvas size, so we'll need to resize it accordingly. To resize the fire image conveniently, first we'll zoom out the image until the entire bounding box of the fire image appears on the window. To do that, press the control key on the keyboard and then scroll the mouse wheel backward. If it becomes too small and you want to zoom it in, simply scroll the mouse wheel forward while still pressing the control key on the keyboard. To scroll the image left or right, press the shift key on the keyboard and scroll the mouse wheel upward or backward. And to scroll the image up or down, simply use the mouse wheel to scroll it up or down. Once you have a good view of the entire bounding box of the fire image, press the shift key on the keyboard and then click and drag the bottom right corner of the bounding box, like this. This will resize the fire image while maintaining its aspect ratio. If you do not press the shift key, its aspect ratio will not be maintained, like the one I'm showing you right now. So once you get the desired size, you can zoom in the image to get a better view for positioning. To move the fire image to the bottom of the canvas, click the Move Selected Pixels tool on the toolbox, and then click and drag the fire image to the bottom. Once you are happy with its position, press Enter on the keyboard. Now as we can see here, we've got a resulting composite image that already looks like the one we wanted to create, but with one problem. If you observe carefully, the transition from the brownish color of the fire image to the black background is a little too abrupt, 
compared to the more gradual and smooth transition on this image. To understand this problem better, let's hide the black background layer by clearing the checkbox on its layer preview. As we can see here, the color of the fire image around its top edge is dark brown and not black, and the transition from the yellowish brown in the middle of the image to the dark brown around the top edge is too short. These two problems cause the color transition in the composite image looks abrupt. To fix this problem, we'll need to add a longer and more gradual gradient towards the top of the canvas to the fire image, so that we can have something like this. To do that, go to the Layers panel and make sure the Fire Layer Preview is selected. Then click the Add New Layer button to add a new layer on top of the Fire Layer, and we'll name it Gradient. Before we draw a gradient, first we have to set the primary and the secondary colors on the Colors panel. The primary color will become the start color of the gradient, while the secondary color will become the end color. For this fire gradient, we'll set the primary color to the color of the fire image around its center by using the Color Picker tool. To do that, first make sure the Colors panel is set to Primary and the current layer is the Fire layer. Then go to the Toolbox and click the Color Picker tool. And then simply click a point on the fire image whose color is to be used as the primary color of the gradient to be drawn. For example, I'm going to click it here, and the primary color will change to the color we picked from the fire image. To set the secondary color, select Secondary on the Colors panel, or simply click the Secondary Color preview below it. For this fire gradient, we're going to use black as secondary color. So I'll just click black on the color palette to change the secondary color to black. Now go back to the Layers panel and click the Gradient Layer Preview to make the gradient layer the working layer. Alright, we're all set to draw the fire gradient. So go to the Toolbox and click the Gradient tool. Then click on the canvas close to the point where you pick the primary color, and then drag the mouse up until you get the desired gradient, like this. Press Enter on the keyboard to confirm the drawing. As we can see here, now the whole canvas is covered by the fire gradient. To show the fire image below the gradient back and have a composite image like this, we'll need to erase the bottom part of the gradient using a very soft eraser. To do that, go to the toolbox and click the eraser tool. On the eraser tool options, set the brush size to 500 or 600, its hardness to 0, and its spacing to 30 or 40. These brush settings will make the eraser brush have a very soft edge as you will see later. Now erase the bottom part of the gradient slowly like this until you get the desired composite image. If you hide the fire image layer, you will see that the fire gradient has a very soft bottom edge, which blends seamlessly with the fire image. Once you're happy with the composite image, you can merge the gradient with the fire image below it so that we can work on them more efficiently later. To do that, First make sure the gradient layer is selected, and then on the Layers panel click the Merge Layer Down button. Alright, now we have a nicely looking fire image with a very soft and long gradient. The next step will be adding the book's image that should appear behind the burning fire. But before I continue, as you have seen just now, one simple rule to remember in editing a composite image is that, every single image or object to be added to the composite should be put on its own separate layer so that we can edit it independently without affecting other images or objects on other layers. With that in mind, we're going to create a new layer for the book's image. But first, here's the little detail that we should pay careful attention to. The books should appear as if they were behind the burning fire, as shown here on the final image. This will determine where we should place the book's layer in the composite and how we manipulate other layers to get the desired result. So for this case, we'll put the book's layer below the fire layer and above the background layer. To do that, go to the Layers panel and select the background layer, and then click the Add New Layer button. As we can see here, the new layer is placed below the fire layer and above the background layer. And for the sake of clarity, I will name this layer Books. Now go to the menu bar, click File, and then click Open to open the book's image. Once the book's image is open, press Ctrl A on the keyboard to select the entire image, and then click the Copy button on the toolbar. Go back to the poster image and then click the Paste button on the toolbar. 
As you can see here, the book's image is hidden below the fire image. Click anywhere inside the book's image's bounding box, and then drag the mouse to place the image at the desired location. Once you are happy with its location, press enter on the keyboard. Now to show the book's image that's hidden below the fire, we'll need to erase part of the fire image that covers the books, again using a soft brush like what we did earlier while adding fire gradient. So click the fire layer on the layers panel, and then click the eraser tool on the toolbox. We're gonna use the same brush settings that we set earlier, and then erase the fire image that covers the book slowly like this. Should you make any mistake while erasing the fire image, you can always undo it by pressing Ctrl Z on the keyboard, or you can even go back several steps to your earlier actions by clicking a past action on the history panel. So here they are, the books are now visible, but with one slight problem. The book's image does not seem to blend with the fire image nicely as some part of it does not look like to be behind brownish smoky hot air, like the one shown here in the final result. To fix this problem, we'll need to add a color overlay on top of the book's image. To do that, add a new layer on top of the book's layer, and we'll name it Books Overlay. Go to the Toolbox panel and click the Paint Bucket tool. We'll use the primary color of the fire gradient we set in the earlier step for this color overlay. Then simply click anywhere on the canvas to draw the color. Now the books will again be hidden behind a solid color. To show them back, go to the menu bar and click Adjustments. Click Transparency to open the Boltbait's Transparency dialog. If you don't have the Transparency menu under Adjustments, you will need to install the Boltbait plugins pack first as I mentioned in the beginning of this tutorial. On the Boltbait's Transparency dialog, move the Transparency slider to the left until you get the desired effect. For example, here I'm gonna set the transparency level of the book's overlay to minus 60. And here it is, now we have the main part of the poster done. The next step will be adding the necessary texts to the poster. Again as a simple rule of thumb, each line of text will be placed on their own separate layers for easier editing. In addition to that, the text layers will all be above the fire layer. The first line of text that we're gonna add is the fire sale at the top of the poster. So go back to the layers panel, click the fire layer preview and then click the add new layer button. We'll name each text layer according to the text it contains, so we'll name this layer fire sale. Now go to the toolbox panel and click the text tool. On the text tools options, select the desired font face. For this text I'm gonna use melted monster font face. If you don't have this font on your PC, you can download it for free for personal use from www.defont.com. Then change the font size to 156 and the text alignment to center. After that, go to the colors panel and change the primary color to white. Simply click the primary color preview and then click the white color on the color palette. Now click somewhere around the top center of the canvas and then type the text. Once you're done typing, click the Move Selected Pixels tool on the toolbox and then click and drag the text to adjust its position if needed. To add the reddish heat effect around the text, we'll use the Object Outline tool from the Boltbaits plugins. To add this effect, on the menu bar, click Effects, then select Object, and then click Outline Object. On the Boltbaits Outline Object dialog, set the width to 10 and then change the outline color to red by clicking the red area on the color wheel. Move the right color slider down to get a dark red color that suits your preference. And lastly, set the blur radius to somewhere around 70 or so. You can play with these settings and see the effects immediately before you apply them to the text. Once you get the right settings, click OK to apply them to the text. Alright, so that how we can add text with effects in paint.net. You can repeat these steps for the remaining texts. Just remember that each line of text should be placed on their own separate layer.
here it is. Our book sale poster is done. To save this poster in PNG format for printing, simply click File and then Save As. On the Save As File dialog, change the file type to PNG and then click Save. On the Save Configuration dialog, click OK. In order to save a multi layered image into PNG format, the image has to be flattened to a single layer first. Therefore, before saving it into PNG format, make sure that you have saved the image in paint.net or PDN format first so that if needed you can edit it again later. Once you are sure that you want to flatten the image, click flatten on the final dialog. Alright, that's how we can create a poster or flyer in paint.net. I hope you find this tutorial useful and thank you for watching.